Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about the allosteric regulation of enzymes. We know that in case of enzymes, we have an active site which binds to the substrate. Now, other than the active site, many enzymes has allosteric site. Now, this allosteric site could be a binding site for several modulators, which we are terming as allosteric modulators. Now, the allosteric site might be also same as the active site in case of many enzymes. So let's look at it. So here is an enzyme where a particular allosteric modulator has bound. Now, this binding of allosteric modulator might change its active site conformation. So look at the active site after binding to the allosteric modulator, the active site conformation is now changed. As a result, this enzyme is no more able to bind to the substrate and the substrate cannot bind nicely to the enzyme's active site. In this case, a negative regulation is taking place and it is affecting the enzyme's velocity and the affinity towards the substrate, right? So this is one kind of allosteric modulation. So in this case, we have learned that the allosteric modulator changed the conformation of the active site in such a way that the substrate is not able to bind to the active site with the same amount of affinity. The affinity of the binding is reduced after the allosteric modulation. So allosteric modulation could be both positive and negative in nature. That means it can augment the reaction velocity or it might reduce it. Depending upon the case, it might be termed as allosteric activator or allosteric inhibitor. So let's try to look at the kinetic data of allosteric enzymes and we try to compare it with the michaelis menten enzymes. michaelis menten enzymes shows a hyperbolic curve. In comparison to michaelis menten enzymes, when we see the kinetics of allosteric enzymes, it does not follow michaelis menten statistics. Rather than it shows a sigmoidal curve and this sigmoidal curve is a hallmark for cooperativity. In a moment we would understand what is cooperativity. So allosteric enzyme's curve is very different from a michaelis menten enzyme curve. Now allosteric modulators can change the affinity towards the substrate and it can also change the reaction velocity. So let's look at the first case. In this case, the red curve is the curve without any allosteric uh, activator. Now, with the binding of allosteric activator or allosteric inhibitor, inhibitor, the curve changes differently. So you can see here, all the cases, the maximum velocity is not that much changed, but the affinity has been changed, right? In the next case, we can see the allosteric modulator can change the reaction velocity as well. In this case, you can see the reaction velocity has been dramatically decreased in case of allosteric inhibitor and increased in case of allosteric activator. So in short, allosteric modulators can both work in a positive and negative fashion to modulate the affinity and the reaction velocity. Now here is an enzyme which is not regulated, which is regulated by allosteric modulator, but it's Allosteric modulator is itself the substrate. So this kind of regulation is known as homotropic allosteric modulation. In other case, where the substrate and the allosteric modulator are two different entities, this case is known as heterotropic allosteric modulators. Now let's take the example of both the cases. So let's take an example of glycolysis pathway since we know it very nicely. So three enzymes of glycolysis pathway are under allosteric regulations, which are hexokinase, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase. So let's look at hexokinase. So hexokinase converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. In this situation, when you have too much of glucose 6-phosphate, it can work as a negative regulator of hexokinase, and it can give a feedback inhibition to hexokinase. It makes a lot of sense because when you have too much of hexo glucose 6-phosphate, then you don't need to run the pathway multiple times because already your pathway would be diverted to the glycolytic flux and it would generate a lot of ATP. In this situation, you don't need to generate further ATP, right? In that case, glucose 6-phosphate works as a feedback inhibitor 
for hexokinase enzyme. Let's talk, take a look at uh, heterotropic uh, modulators. For example, AMP and ATP works differently in this pathway. When you have too much ATP, you don't need to run the glycolytic pathway to get ATP. In that situation, ATP inhibits pyruvate kinase and phosphofructokinase. Whereas AMP is a signature that we don't have that much of ATP in our body. Our body is running through low level of ATP. In that situation, we need to run the glycolytic pathway. As a result, AMP works as a positive modulator of phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. So we looked at that in any kind of biochemical pathway, there could be homotropic and heterotropic allosteric modulation. And all of these modulations are done in order to meet the physiological requirement. So the allosteric enzymes are mostly complex enzymes having more than one subunits and each of these enzymes might have an active and an inactive conformation which they switch in between. Now binding of allosteric modulators in this case look at this allosteric modulator might change the conformation of the nearby active site, making it more accessible towards a substrate, such that the substrate can bind. Not only that, it can change the conformation of the distant active site and ensuring more substrate can bind to the nearby active site. So binding of the substrate is actually happening in a co cooperative fashion. And that brings out the point of cooperativity. Now in that case, we can take the example of hemoglobin and oxygen binding to it. Now exactly hemoglobin is not an enzyme, but still the modulation type is allosteric regulation and cooperative binding. So here is a hemoglobin in, in an inactive state when it's not bound to O2. Now one oxygen molecule binding to one subunit of the hemoglobin make other subunit more accessible towards oxygen binding such that it is easier for other subunit to bind to the oxygen. And in this subsequent fashion, all the subunits bind to oxygen and it creates the oxygenated hemoglobin, which is very important for our physiological attributes. Other than hemoglobin, we can take an example from our own nervous system. In nervous system, we have a molecule known as calmodulin dependent kinase 2, CAMK2, which when don't bind to calcium, it is in its closed conformation and it, this conformation is inactive state. But when it binds to calcium, it alters its conformation and becomes more open. And this is very important for synaptic plasticity, long-term potentiation and many other aspects of synaptic physiology. So we can understand that how spike in calcium level can lead to alteration in the conformation change of uh, CAMK2 and as a result the physiological properties would be altered. So in this video we overall looked at the principle of allosteric modulation, we looked at the kinetic data how it affects the reaction velocity or the affinity of the enzyme towards the substrate and we also took an example of hemoglobin and CAMK2 to understand the allosteric modulation. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, introductory video about allosterism. In subsequent video, we are going to talk about the kinetics in much more detail. So stay tuned and make sure you comment at the end of this video such that it gives me some positive motivation to make more videos. Thank you.